Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. Uh, I've been pretty busy lately. Uh, I've been working on the Emco Turn 140 here. And uh, a couple other things that uh, I've been working on is the encoder. Um, I've got some video clips of that. I'll try and stuff them in this video. And I've also been making an adapter plate for the spindle motor, the new five horsepower spindle motor that replaces the DC motor. Um, don't have much on it, but uh, I do have a few shots of the adapter plate that I made. It's this half inch steel plate. It was uh, machined to fit the motor and then uh, to fit the original uh, cast iron motor mount on the machine itself. Uh, so far both of those are done and uh, like I said I took a hodgepodge of pictures and a couple of video clips and I'll go ahead and show them here and uh, then I will bring you back and I will show you the machine uh, I'll show you the machine spindle running now under uh, centroid acorn control and uh, the spindle encoder uh, uh, showing the spindle RPM all right so uh, Let's see those clips and the pictures of the uh, encoder first and then the bracket for the spindle. Encoder all mounted up to the base plate. Um, of course that's the encoder to 2000 line per revolution. So to the Centroid software um, I will program it as 8000 pulses per rev. And then uh, you can see I, also while I had this apart I replaced the bearings. They're just a slip fit. It was easy enough to do. And then right there, that's the, the encoder itself, and it slips over the shaft. So the shaft, again, I turned it down uh, to 8 millimeters when I took the brass disc off. You can see how big it was. And then there's the spacers. You can see them on either side on the encoder mount, the little spacers there to space it up off the plate. You can see these encoders, they can account for a little bit of misalignment. There's little spring steel mounts there. Again, so it can account for any small misalignment. Um, I checked the run out. I had about a thousand, so that's well within the tolerance of this encoder. Um, I mean, you can't even see it wobbling back and forth. So uh, anyway, so then here's the housing, the old housing, and then you can see the encoder poking up there. And then there's an O-ring on the top and the bottom, and then here's the cover. So uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, I'm going to bolt that cover back on it and tighten up the gland nut there for the encoder cable. Um, one thing to note is the this cable, this encoder comes with, I think it's about oh, two meters worth of cable. So it's not going to be quite long enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a DB9 connector on it, and then I'm going to use a shielded extension DB9 straight through cable uh, to connect it to the motion control board. I made an extension cable. I used uh, Centroid's uh, encoder cable here. It's their stuff, and I just terminated it. I followed the uh, pinouts on the schematics. This right here, this black, is the uh, cable from the encoder. This is the pigtail that comes from factoryimation.com. And then uh, this is my extension cable. And I'm testing it here with uh, Acorn. So here you can see I'm, uh, I'm going to rotate the shaft here, and then you can see the encoder counts changing on the display and uh, that's uh, assigned to encoder 5 and if you look at the end to the far left there's an asterisk that comes up Let's see if I can get it it's the index pulse there it is There it is. And then you can see it uh, counting up and down. So uh, it appears to be working. Okay, that's the existing uh, motor mount right there that uh, held the original DC motor, spindle motor. 
The uh, bolt pattern is not the same as my replacement motor. I purchased this motor online. It's an import motor. It's a 5 horsepower, 1800 RPM motor. It is a standard NEMA mounting frame. It's a 184 TC, I believe it is. Um, it's that rating because it has the traditional foot uh, mounting as well as a face mounting. And there's the face right there. Um, also, the other thing I did is I bored this pulley out uh, from the old motor to the new. This is an inch and an eighth shaft, which is standard. And I also broached in a new keyway. The old keyway was metric, so that pulley is ready to go. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm getting ready to lay out the adapter plate. It's a piece of half inch hot rolled plate. Um, and again, it, uh, the plan is, is it's going to bolt to the existing flange. I'm going to drill and tap new holes in the corners here. It's also going to bolt to this flange here. I'm going to, I'm going to machine out an opening to clear pulley and then I'm going to machine uh, the recess for this uh, spigot on the motor. So that's what I got going so far. Uh, been pretty busy, but I've been trying to do a little bit every day. Okay, here's the uh, new spindle motor installed. It's a five horsepower inverter duty spindle motor. It's an import, I'm trying it out. Uh, it's well, it seems to be well built, it's a cast iron frame. The motor frame is a 184 TC, meaning it's a face mount or it's got a foot. In this case, I'm using the face mount. And this here is the uh, plate that uh, I machined to accept the spigot on the motor, and then I redrilled and tapped this uh, cast iron, the original cast iron mount to accept the motor. And then I bored the original motor pulley and uh, broached it. It's a standard NEMA inch and an eighth shaft and a quarter inch key. So it's, uh, it's, it's mounted and uh, looks good. Uh, don't mind all this, it's all temporary. I got temporary wiring right now until I finally get this thing all wired up in the cabin. I'm just doing a lot of testing subsystems, if you will. So the spindle is running now. The encoder is uh, also mounted back on the machine. <clears throat> Here's the spindle encoder. It's belted at one to one uh, with the spindle. That's very important. Um, that uh, when you're using the centroid, any of the centroid hardware, that your spindle encoder is belted at one-to-one -one with that spindle. Um, there's not much to see, but I'll show you. Uh, you've seen the little video clips uh, of, this, of what I had to do to it. And basically, I took the old Emco uh, slotted disc off and I machined the end of the spindle to eight millimeter, and then I got a standard line driver encoder for it and uh, installed it. So uh, anyway, there's that. Okay, what I'd like to demonstrate now is that the spindle is now running um, under centroid acorn control. Let me show you down here. I've got a variable frequency drive. We've got a variable frequency drive. It's a Huan Yang. This is the GT series. It's a sensorless vector. Uh, spindle drive. This one happens to be a 7.5 kW. It was recommended by uh, Huan Yang to go basically double the the requirements of the spindle motor. I've got a 5 horsepower motor which is about 3.7 kilowatts. You double that you get 7.5. There wasn't a lot of difference between the 3.7 and the 7.5 kilowatt um, VFD. And again this is their sensorless vector uh, drive. It's the GT series. It's a 100 ohm, 1000 watt braking resistor for this uh, VFD. Um, I am very impressed with uh, Huan Yang, the company itself. Not any, there are copies of these things out there, but Huan Yang Electric, they've been very responsive. They've got some videos on YouTube. Um, they've answered any question that I've had 
Um, there's a gentleman that took one of these apart uh, on YouTube and was fairly uh, impressed with the construction of it, so I thought I'd give it a try. It's single phase in and three phase out, and I've got a five horsepower spindle. Uh, it's one of the few that I know of that'll uh, do single phase input for a higher horsepower motor. Um, how long it lasts, that yet remains to be seen, but um, I haven't seen a lot of terrible things about them, so I thought it was worth giving them a try. Um, so anyway, let's see, this, let's see this thing run. Let's just go ahead, and I'm in, uh, there's automatic, I'll go in manual mode so I can just control it from here. And I'll put it in 100% and I'll just hit start. And you can see right here, I've got the RPM set at 3000 max. And uh, this is about half, so it's getting about 1,539 RPM, you can see right here. That's uh, encoder feedback showing up right there. And I'll let you take a look at the spindle. Not sure how long it's been since this spindle has ran. There's the spindle running. Again, I have no idea how long it's been since that spindle's run, but it sounds pretty good. Let's slow it down. That's about 880 RPM. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. I'm gonna go into MDI, and I'm gonna do an M3S1000. And cycle start. And there's about a thousand RPM. We'll go S2000. S3000, it's the max. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. I'm just gonna do an M5 from right there. Let's do an M3-2500. S500. S100. And the actual RPM says it's about 111. So, um, you do an S3000 again. And an M5. Okay, that's it for the update on the Emco Turn 140. So, uh, I've got spindle running, got the encoder installed. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to work a little bit on the turret macro and see if I can get that turret running um, just by doing tool changes. So uh, until next time, talk to you guys soon.